Hello, everybody. Welcome and welcome back to B and B Anime. We're laughing, but you don't know why. I'm blue. <laughs> it's because we big dog. Yeah, it's because I'm blue. That's Brad, and that's why we're laughing. It, I don't know why I said it's because. No, we just are. Um, <laughs> and today we're going to be going into Umaru Chan. But before we get into all of that discussion, this is going to be the last podcast episode for the next couple of weeks. Possibly, at least the next week, that isn't pre-recorded. So, um, yeah, we get some news today. The next couple of weeks we may not have news, or there may be news that has been inserted by a, a I was going to say a foreign broadcaster, but they're not foreign. It's just... It's just us. Like, nothing about this is technically foreign. Well, except the fact is. that we're in different countries. Uh, you know, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a bit about this that is foreign. I'm from two countries as is. I am not foreign. I am America. <laughs> You're foreign to me. <laughs> Mate, we've known each other for how long? I'm, I'm hurt. You're still a foreigner. I'm uh, hurt. You know, you know what's funny? The thing that I was the most sad about when getting my Canadian citizenship uh-huh. was the fact that I was no longer an alien. But you are still an anomaly. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. that. I say it out of love. <laughs> But yeah, I was like, I'm no longer a legal alien. Because all of my friends used to joke, they're like, um, you're not an illegal alien, you're a legal alien. And I was like, I can't say that anymore. Oh, poor Blue. I know. It was so sad. So sad. So are you excited to move? Ah, uh, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yes, I'm very excited to move. I'm very excited to move into my my apartment. It's tiny and, and I've been designing it for uh, like two weeks now since I kind of first saw it. It's been in my head. It was like, I want that one. I want that one. And then when the paperwork went through, I was super excited. Mm -hmm. And I kind of been designing the layout and stuff because it is teeny tiny, teeny tiny in the middle of a city studio apartment type, you know, a closet. (gasps) You can finally live out your Harry Potter fantasies of living under the cupboard. You know, our cupboard under the stairs in in the UK, because we did have one that was like that. It contained both a half bathroom, so a toilet and a sink, and a shoe cupboard. So you're literally living in a cupboard under the stairs. Yeah. Well, in the <laughs> it's houses are so small in the UK that we had one and a half bathroom, and our half bathrooms was under the stairs. That that for some reason that humors me. That humors yeah. me greatly. Yeah. It's. It, <laughs> My dad and my brother now wouldn't be able to fit. I probably wouldn't be able to fit now, to be honest. Well, it's because you're so damn tall. Yeah, I am pretty. No, I'm not. I'm five foot two. Uh, Sorry, four foot nine. I forgot that was a running joke. (laughs) I forgot my own joke. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. None of this is making air. Right? I know. I have to I have to continue to seem like I am the god here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, tiny apartment. Very excited to move. There is a vegetable shop that I didn't really get to explore just down the road from my apartment. Mm-hmm. Um that seems to be ran by this old Asian couple. I don't know if that is accurate or if they were just an Asian couple shopping at the vegetable stand when I walked by, but it looked like they were running it. Uh. Um, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. It looked like, you know, they had like, they looked like employees. They didn't look like shoppers. But Uh anyway, my point was that I'm excited to go there because I love fresh veg and uh, they had a lot of plants out there and they were all really, really well taken care of. And there was like the fruit stand out front and they, and none of it looked bruised or anything. Or, um, like, like, I don't know, mass produced, I guess. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and none of it was wrapped in any plastic or anything. So I'm really excited to go there and, and explore properly. And then opposite that, there was a little coffee shop that was like in a hole in the wall kind of thing, you know, hole in the wall type coffee shop place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't get to explore that either because we were only there for the viewing the one day that we, that we were there and we had we had other things that we had to do that day so we didn't actually get to explore the area very much mm-hmm. so um yeah we walked around for a bit but i'm excited to actually like go in these places that i saw that i thought were interesting there was also a shop around the corner that did palmistry that i didn't get to go out into but it looked like a convenience store that then just had like you know those ice cream signs that's out like the the 
they're kind of like wet floor signs, but they're not. They and they have like ice cream flavors on normally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, it was that, but it was like advertising palmistry in the middle of a convenience store. And so I was very confused and didn't get to go in. But I'm excited to explore that as well. That's the first thing you're going to go explore. Yeah, probably. Go get my future read. <laughs> Apparently I have pretty good palm lines. Future palm. I don't know. I don't know. Mine have been burned and scarred to hell. So I, I probably couldn't get a good read. Either that or they're going to tell me I have the grim. Who knows? Have, it's the grim. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Yeah, now my hands are pretty beat up and scarred as well, but they can they can tell by the lines and shit. Mm-hmm. So they can read between the lines. They can they can read the lines and between them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but do we have any any oh well I suppose what what have you about you you have a birthday party to get to. Yeah. So my cousin that's three weeks older than I am, it's we're going to his birthday party, we're going to get some Japanese food, we're going to a place called Hana. It's absolutely fantastic i never sent you a picture of the roll i got there last time but it is amazing why did my brain go D D before it went like food anything's possible <laughs> i never sent you a picture of the roll i got <laughs> it's just, it's just so i i have seen some D D dice to where a nat a nat one is oof and <laughs> a nat 20 is yeet <laughs> So I really want to get some of those, both for myself, and then get you a pair so you can give it to your brother, because I feel like your brother would absolutely love that shit. He would love that. My brother is very picky about the color of dice, though, because he obviously is quite heavily colorblind. I was about to make a colorblind joke, but you you said it. (laughs) Yeah, no, yeah. He can't see them, so he has to... He's. He goes for purple dice, mostly, because he can't see the red pigment in it the same way Mm -hmm. that we can. So it just looks like a really vibrant blue is what he assumes that it looks like to us. Because <laughs> obviously we say it looks like a really vibrant blue to him, but like I can't see through his eyes and he can't see through mine. So we assume that's what we have come to from many discussions. The conclusion is um, it looks like a super vibrant blue for him. So he he normally goes with purple. So get him some like galaxy purple dyes that have that on it. Got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. With some super clear number, like the, the numbers have to be like super contrasted. I'll get some white acrylic and make sure that they are very vibrant. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, I'm super curious. If there's anybody that's colorblind at home, do you guys have similar problems with things like dice? Or, like, I don't know. I don't know what else What else he... I I can't really think of anything else he struggles with. I know know that we always joke that he can't see the colors that he... um, that are there. So, you know, like those camo jokes where, where are you? We Mm -hmm. do that for anything that's red and green. (laughs) <laughs> it, it's funny because whenever I thought about the joke initially, I was like, I need to get him some Christmas themed dice. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't even listen to this, and I'm joking. I know. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. Whenever he's drinking like a Coke or anything, we're just like, how do you even hold that can? You can't even see it. <laughs> Yes, that's how colorblind works. Yeah, right? Uh, we have this mug. It's a Tim Hortons mug, because of course. But it's white on the outside, and the inside color is red. Uh-huh. So he can't see the inside of his drink. He can only see the outside of the mug. So how does he know it's full? But He doesn't. He just looks into it, and it's just the void. <laughs> he he can actually read the future out of the cups. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen the void. It's like he looks into it and he sees uh, Gojo's dimensional prison. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, my God. But other than that, so I told you about my pettiness last week, right? I think so. So to those that are unaware, I can't remember who, what, when, where, how, or why. But anyway, so one of my best friends decided to absolutely kick my ass. And Soul Calibur, also my apologies. I'm still sick. <laughs> As you can tell, although the only other episode that I was sick in is the one that's going out next week for Silent Voice, so whatever. Anyway, so I, after getting my ass absolutely handed to me in Soul Calibur, decided to be a very petty bitch and spend 60 bucks on like a three or four year old game so I could actually get good at Soul Calibur so I could kick Coda's ass. <laughs> well, I have succeeded. Yay! I won one game, but Aww. he was using his Yay. best character, so I won. Okay, I did that's what I fair. couldn't do. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much been my week. You know, still sick, 
I'm living my best life. Well, I hope you get better soon. Did you pick up some tea? I did not. I also haven't been shopping. I'm sick. You want me to just go out into the public and spread my illness? No, that's true. Don't do that. Yeah, see, there we go. But send someone to go get tea. Mm, nah, I'm basically over it. Okay, fine. fine. Basically over it. Do we have also, any news? Oh, wait. We do what? have news. Ooh. However, I was going to say, I regret to inform you that I've still not managed to get more than six hours of sleep. I apologize. Ugh. Well, you're trying, so... I will give you Airplanes a break. trying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, news. Aww. So, first bit. So, I have... So, this is actually a news piece that I chose because I looked at it and I was like, you know, these manga titles are getting a little out of hand. They turn into Fall Out Boy songs? Well, you see, I have found probably the most... Oddball Isekai title I've ever seen. Okay. Reborn as a vending machine, I now wander the dungeon. It's Maybe. a light novel series that is officially getting a manga adaptation on August 27th. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, if you're filled with snacks, that's, like, not a bad thing. I mean, so not, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's just... Wait, no, wait, no, we're talking anime. about Japanese vending machines, aren't we? So they could be filled with, like, hot ramen and... Literally anything. Li pizza, like, like, like boxes drinks, of random drinks. things with notes on from creepy people. Like, underwear. Pachinko machines. Uh, uh, friggin', I don't know, anything, anything. Uh, bugs. You can find vending machines with bugs in them. I feel like you can find those anywhere, though. Okay. <laughs> I meant for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, depending on how old the vending machine is, technically the bugs on whatever that are in there are technically for sale. Ugh. <laughs> oh, you're, I bet you're glad you're getting a two week break from me. <laughs> <laughs> this has been, this has been my week for like the past week. One of the guys I work with was talking about going over to his girlfriend's house and watching Hannah Montana. And I was like, have you told her that if you go over there, she's getting the best of both worlds? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, it, it immediately spit out. Like, my brain didn't even have time to process what I said. It's just the second he told me he was trying to decide whether he was going over there or not, that just came out. And I was like, I'm on a roll. This is my week. This is my moment. And again, I'm back to D&D &D dice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're probably going to stay there. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, apparently that's what I need to do when I get to Toronto, though, is is find a group to play D&D &D with me. You should. Go to one We're of them gaming, to game cafes, games, game, you know the ones, the cafe where mm -hmm. it's like food and shit and games and shit? Yeah, one of those. Them. Yeah, do it. Make friends. Yeah, friendship. friendship. Although we are still in a pandemic, so be careful about making friends. Yes. Well, yeah, I'm fully vaccinated now. Yay! Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I obviously don't want to... Because you can still get it when you're vaxxed, right? You just don't get a stronger version. Yeah, like, apparently, there's only been, like, one reported case of a death if you've been vaccinated out of mm -hmm. the whole thing. But you can still spread it pretty bad to people who haven't been vaxxed, so yeah. Especially with the new variant. Like, you can really yeah, the, spread the it. Yeah, the Delta or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because that's like a... a like a 4% spread rate as opposed to a, the original 1% that uh, COVID-19, the original Something variant like has. that. Like, apparently it's a lot more contagious. Yeah. And then even vaccinated now, like, it will spread, but it's a, I think, 99.9% .9 success rate of you not being hospitalized if you're vaccinated. Right. Um. Yeah. So both me and my mom are fully vaxxed. My dad and my brother are half vaxxed. They were working on the day that mom and I went to go get vaxxed, but they are going to get vaxxed in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah. mm -hmm. That is good. And next piece of news. So this prompted me to update our recording schedule, although everything is nice and uploaded in the order that it's supposed to be uploaded in. So the... New Game Manga is officially coming to an end on August 27th after eight years and 13 volumes. Mm. New Game is the story of a 
girl who fresh out of high school goes to work for a game development company. I figured this one might hit a little bit close to home for some of the people that listen to this. So, I decided what better thing to stick on the schedule next after this week than a story about game development. It's adorable, yeah. it's a nice little slice of life, and it continues on the path of giving you a break after emotionally destroying you earlier this week. <laughs> yeah. So... But yeah, I have seen New Game both seasons. I love it. It's great fun. It's a really good story. And, you know, for those that are unaware, you can see a little bit of a, you know, bird's eye view of like the game industry and how characters are designed and like what actually goes into making a game. So yeah. it's, it's a really interesting little story. So I I think you'll get a kick out of it and some other people that yeah, I'm listen fully to this intrigued. and help out with it. So. Uh, I think you're going to have a great time with it. I'm fully intrigued because, yeah, things like that's, yeah, that's a real, that hits kind of like close to home. Like that sounds super interesting and like, wow, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I figured it would, I figured it'd be a nice little one to kind of ease you back into the recording process after a couple weeks off and be fascinating to you. Mm-hmm. And next piece of news. So the new trailer for Jujutsu Kaisen Zero has officially dropped. Ooh. So, if you're unaware, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is a prequel to the Jujutsu Kaisen television show, and MAPPA has said that they're going to be doing it again. Thank God, MAPPA did a great job. <laughs> so, they need to, need to stick with that. Yay! Yes, excited. Yeah, so, final piece of news. Demon Slayer related, because why the fuck not? I feel mm. like we can't go an episode without... Talking about Demon Slayer at this point, although it deserves it. Anyway, so it has been announced that the second season is going to be too core, and the first five to seven episodes are going to take place during the Mugen Train arc. Mm -hmm. So they're pulling a, drag a Dragon Ball Super with like the Battle of the Gods and Resurrection F of they're going to be reanimating the show and or reanimating the film and actually putting it into the show. Okay. Which means, hopefully, I'm praying to the gods of anime that they get rid of that shitty CGI. The tentacles. Yeah, like, we don't... I mean, here's the thing. I'm okay with the tentacles. Just don't use the CGI version. It's creepy. Oh, that sentence should not have been said. It should not have been said. But it it had to be said because the CGI tentacles look terrible. Yeah. It It, it doesn't belong in, like, the way... That Demon Slayer crafts its worlds and environments and everything. It doesn't belong. It doesn't mm -hmm. sit well. Mm -hmm. So just reanimate it properly in the actual animation of the show and whatever happens, happens. Because mm -hmm. we've seen Food Wars at this point. That That's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Demon Slayer and its use of tentacles is nowhere near as... Bad as Food Wars, like the first the episode, first, for instance. Yeah, the first episode. That's what I was gonna say. But funnily enough, though, I've I've gotten some friends of mine to actually give Food Wars a shot, and they um, actually agree. Like, once you get past the first season, so much better. You just have to get past the first season. I think the first season just needed to be so emotionally strong of a response that they would get people. To watch and be interested about it. I think that's like half of the thing. It was but just they like needed a conversation piece. People in. Uh, it's a conversation piece, but you're pulling in. I was about to say you're like pulling in like a different crowd than what you're going for. But I guess, you know, it's like the thing, like any publicity is good publicity. That's the thing. Yeah. I feel like it was just them really trying to get a foothold in people's minds, getting, getting the show implanted into people's minds. So that then when the second season came out and it was better... And then people started hearing it again. They would go, oh, isn't that, that that weird one that I heard about before? This is the second time I'm now hearing about it. I'm going to give it a shot. So I feel like it's one of those long-term goal conversational pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Should we jump into it? Yeah. So, background. Umaru-chan was written by Sankaku Head. <laughs> uh, let me... I, I, it, it's spelled like head. I don't, um, and I I speak multiple languages, and that I don't know how you would actually pronounce that other than head. Yeah, <laughs> head. I have no idea because D isn't like D isn't just a thing on its own in, in Japanese. It's like D or D A or D. You know, it's got a D and then a vowel. Uh huh. So I don't know. 
I don't know. Umaru was basically a giant head, though, so we could. Okay. Yeah, it's fitting. Fair enough. <laughs> the manga was published by Suisha, and it was published in the weekly Young Jump. And there are 12 volumes. It ran from March 14th of 2013 to November 9th of 2017. The anime series was directed by Masahiko Ota and was made by Studio Doga Kobo, who have made other fantastic things like Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, which is also scheduled for us. Seeing yesterday for me that we thought was a music anime, but was not a music anime, so that got canned really quickly. Mm. And they're covering our topic for next week, or, you know, the next episode that we actually record of yeah. New Game, both seasons. Yay! Umaru-chan ran from November 9th of 2015 to September 24th of 2015 for a grand total of 12 episodes. Mm -hmm. I need another season. <laughs> There's so much more manga. Give me more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, uh, it is rated at PG-13, which I feel like is pretty accurate. Uh, kind of. I feel like it's a tweener. Yeah, I feel like it could be between PG and PG-13. I'm trying to think of the, if there are any specific jokes that come to mind that make me feel like it should be specifically the 13. I guess it, there's it, a few boob jokes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I could really think of, though. Yeah. I Yeah, I don't really think of anything else that would make it... Yeah, I feel like, yeah, PG-13 is fair. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, it is rated on Anime Planet, uh, from public opinion, it is a 3.8 out of 5, or, um, uh, 7.6. I was about to be like, what, does, does that matter? Huh? Yeah, no, that's correct. Uh, 7.6 out of 10. It is 7.15 out of 10 on my anime list. And I did some maths on this. <laughs> so, uh... I was telling Brad about this before, um, before we started recording, because Rob was like, oh, I hate maths. And I'm like, yes, I do too. But I also did maths because this was um, very interesting to me. Uh huh. So basically, when I got to around episode five or six in the show, I was watching on Crunchyroll, I scrolled down. And in the comments, I saw that there was quite a few comments of people being like, I absolutely love this. And then other people being like, I hate the main character. And... It was one of those things where it seemed like the show was what I call a Marmite show, because Marmite's slogan is either you either love it or you hate it. And it felt like this was kind of one of those shows of you either love it or you hate it. And so I got really curious about how many people started the show and then dropped it. And my, uh, and Anime Planet, the website, has a system where you can go on and when you watch a show, you can log it into one of four categories. You can, uh, log it into watched, watching, want to watch, or dropped. So you go through, you find anime or manga that you like, and you can put it on your profile under one of those four categories. So I took off want to watch because that was, that wasn't needed. Um, and so I just only looked at watched, watching, and dropped. And uh, I added them together and got the percentage of how many people, out of all of the people that had logged it onto the website, how many of those people had dropped it partway through because of this, like, seeming to be very strong opinions of this show. And it ended up with a 7.16% drop rate. So then I was like, okay, well, that's interesting that 7.16 people decided to drop the show partway through. But it doesn't really tell me much because I don't really know what to compare it to. Mm hmm so then I was like, well, we've done a few slice of lifey kind of PG-13 comedy-esque shows in the past here on the podcast. So I'll go back and find those and find out what their percentages are for dropped rates and we can give them a comparison. So I went to laid back camp and that has a 4.5 drop rate compared to, um, Umaru Chan 7.16. Mm -hmm. Tanaka Kun has a 5.4% drop rate and mm -hmm. are you lost? has a 9.7% drop rate. So that's the highest so far. I could see that. Mm -hmm. So then I was curious because I was like, okay, well, that tells us kind of in the genre of where it stands. But that doesn't really tell us where it stands in comparison to like other things to know, like we need kind of a, a bit of a control. Mm -hmm. So I went to Jujitsu Kaisen because we know that that was voted the best on Crunchyroll. So that should have a really, really low drop rate in comparison, right? So I did the maths on that, and that has a 0.91% drop rate. And that has so many... Listen to these numbers. The total people that have either watched, 
are watching it or have dropped it on this website is over 70,000 people. The amount of people that have dropped it, 646. Wow. Yeah. So huge difference. Like the amount just by the sheer number of people that have watched that. So I felt like that gave us a pretty good understanding of a really good drop rate ratio. Mm -hmm. So then I decided that I needed something that I know would have a bad drop rate ratio. So I chose something that is older, something that has a load of episodes. And Prison school. <laughs> no, I actually didn't think of that. And um, uh, something that I feel like didn't, doesn't, like wasn't super popular over here. So I didn't want to choose something like Naruto or One Piece or Fairy Tale um, because I feel like they have so many, like, long-term fans that it would skew the opinions a bit. Mm -hmm. So I went to one of my personal favorite animes of all time, Prince of Tennis. Uh -huh. the, and although it's rated an 8.06 out of 10, it does have a 12.75% total drop rate. Hmm. So for Umaru-chan, it is up there in comparison to our highest and our lowest it is up there closer to the highest compared to the lowest as a, at a 7.16. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just It was just very interesting to me because of how strong people's opinions were on this. Anyway, what do you think? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I could see it because it's definitely more of like a niche show. Yeah. And there's not as – it's not as captivating as Tonka Kuhn, which I believe we both gave a 10. Like mm -hmm. it's not on that level by any means. Mm-hmm. However, I mean, again, it's it's all just uh, I get it. I guess it's what I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. No. So anyway, that was that was my thoughts on on. <laughs> I just got uh, you know when you do the one thing and you're like, this is interesting, and I now need to carry out a full experiment. That happened mm -hmm. to me, and so this happened. Um, but I feel like it's one of those things that I'm definitely going to be paying attention to in the future, and I feel like I'm going to start maybe keeping a log of um the drop rate for all of the shows that we that we um, look at in the future, because obviously not for the next couple of weeks, because those are pre-recorded. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep you guys posted on drop rates for stuff. And I'm kind of going to try and categorize them and maybe make a, um, uh, a like a, a calendar or whatever. And we can keep track of who has the highest drop rate and who has the lowest drop rate at time of recording. Because obviously I'm not going to keep them updated with everyone that then logs on their opinions afterwards. Um but yeah, I am using specifically Anime Planet as the website for this because they have everything so clearly laid out. So um, yeah, and that doesn't have as much traffic as my anime list. It is a, a less trafficked website. But yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things that I definitely think that I'm going to be keeping track of in the future. So I will keep you posted on drop rates of certain things because yeah. I'm totally not looking up prison school to see how it was, see how it's, see how it's done. Prison school. I'm going to do the maths on it. So prison school has 25 for 3 plus 2021 plus 1945 equals, let me write that down, 29369. So then the drop is 1945 divided by 293369. Oh, I can do typing so prison school has a better <laughs> drop times 100 rate equals 6.6 percent drop rate uh, that's bullshit i don't this this system is biased i hate it i hate it so much <laughs> but then again i guess it kind of makes sense considering like the differences of niche audiences mm. i actually realized that i reported on this ever so slightly wrong so you know how i was saying that uh, Imru Chan has a 7.16. That is correct, but the 7.16 is only if you calculate the dropped and watched. I took out the watching to do some other different ones. I was looking at the wrong number. It's actually a 6.4% total drop rate. Okay, that's better. My faith in humanity has been restored. Okay, if you include the watching. Yeah. Yep. Because there's 2,111 people currently watching it according to the site at the time I wrote the numbers down. So, um, yeah, I didn't add them into the equation because I was looking at a different <laughs> part of my sheet. Yata. <laughs> but yeah, prison school having a 6.6% drop rate is actually not bad, according to my system. It is up there, but not bad. It's just... It's I about middle of the it. road. Yeah, it, it deserved to be dropped. Yeah, but yeah, so do we, I don't know. Do, do we have any more before we um, dive straight into the shenanigans that is well, Umaru? Uh, 
uh, I guess just a, just an overview of the main idea of the show, and then we jump right into it. Yeah. So yeah, Umaru-chan is about a young high school girl called Umaru who is very lazy and um, is basically an otaku, <laughs> um, except that she, when she goes out in public to go to school or whatever, is the perfect epitome of the best student, the best everything. Everyone thinks that she comes from a super rich family, that she was, her parents are like CEOs of a giant corporation, that she's- But she does. <laughs> yeah, but like, but no, but yes, but no. But yes. <laughs> but yeah, but also no. Um, but the, yes, even though you never see the parents, like it even is, Bomber yes, talks about yeah. Taihei being like- Oh yeah, like his his parents actually run like a giant corporation, and then it's like, then why? Like, how was this? A thing? How is this? A thing? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, he like she is the epitome of the the best of the best, and then her older brother Tai is the one who's currently looking after her in a one B case, like a studio apartment, basically what I'm moving into in Toronto, and they uh live together. She goes to high school he takes care of her and the reason why people find it so controversial why it's got such strong opinions on it is because of her character the fact that she is very quickly established is very dependent on her brother shall we say yeah and some people found her kind of annoying so you know bear that in mind um if you're if you haven't watched it and you are debating on watching it it's really good though there's some good good jokes in here it is a slice of life as i said um, it is a comedy. It's, yeah, it's pretty chill. It's got some, some good jokes in there. There's some debates on who to ship the older brother with because there were a couple of options in the end. There are some, there's one girl in here that reminds me of Jessie from Pokemon. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like a, it's a pretty decent show. 12 episodes. They're pretty short. It's, it's like chill. I don't know. It's, a, you know, nothing to really write a blog post on. But, like, also, it's good time, even though we're doing a podcast on it. So I don't know what I'm talking about. But you know what I mean? No, you have contradicted everything that you have said. Right? Honestly. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, it's good. It's definitely, like, a good rainy day kind of show. Like, if you just want a good laugh. Yeah. Definitely not the best thing to sit and try to binge for a podcast. No. But considering what we went through earlier this week, it's just fine. Yeah, I find the episodes can get a tad repetitive, so I do like the idea of using it as kind of a pick-me-up kind of show. So, like, you watch an episode of something heavy, and then you watch an episode of this to just lighten the mood a little bit kind of thing. I think that's what, what it's good for. So how do we how do we go about this one? Do we just talk about, like, our favorite skits? I think that's probably best. Because the show is very much, like, it's linear, but... But it's not. <laughs> yeah, like, it takes place over, like, a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's linear, but all of the bits and everything kind of run together and it kind of jumps back and forth a tad bit, like around Christmas and whatnot. It kind of like jumps back and forth a smidge bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's chuck those spoiler chicken hats on, but like, like Brad said, we're probably not going to be going into, well, we're definitely not going to be going into every single detail of the show. So I don't feel like, oh, there will be spoilers for sure, but I don't feel like you could listen to this and then not still get enjoyment out of the show because yeah we're not going to be going over everything and there's going to be a bunch there that you will still have to experience for yourself for the first time if you're interested in watching so in listening to the rest of this you know mm -hmm. okay right. spoil hats on yeah chicken hats so first questions first what did you think about the op and ed more specifically the op op was good ed i found kind of dull yeah but the op i love like custom made ops for shows Mm -hmm. I love that. It was great. It was a fun time. Yeah, I agree. Probably like one of my favorite parts about the anime was just sitting through the OP. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ED, very dull. So what was your favorite and least favorite skits? My favorite skit um, skits were pretty much anything with Taihei and uh, Takashi. Mm -hmm. Whether they were at work or um, that when they went to go get food. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that anything with the two of them together, I thought was really funny. I don't know. They, they it, they're just they crack me up together. Yeah, uh, it's a really good. What is it like? I can't remember. What the, like the straight man Joker act, the straight man fool man kind of thing act. Mm -hmm. 
I don't yeah. know. It's very basic comedy setup and it works very well. Mm-hmm. My least favorite skit, I found Silf- Silfin Ford. I have no idea how to say her name. Sylphine. Sylphie. Um, I found, why does that sound like a Pokemon? Could be. Um, <laughs> Anything would be a Pokemon at this point. Honestly. Uh, I found her kind of annoying at times. She's had some really nice moments in there where you kind of got to see a little bit more of her her character. But um, yeah, she would appear in just like random moments where it wasn't necessary. Uh, one comes to mind where like in the classroom a couple of times where the, she like Umaru was having a conversation with another classmate and then all of a sudden she would just appear for like three seconds to say something and then disappear again. And it brought no context or anything. And I found that kind of disruptive. But every main character needs a rival. Even if it, like, jars your ADHD brain. Yeah, it was just, I found it disruptive. What about you? (laughs) So, favorite bit was probably the Valentine's Day episode. Because that was just a whole lot of good shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Especially with Kiri giving Taihei burnt cookies and then feeling really bad about it. So, that was good. I enjoyed that. Yeah. But least favorite? Uh, I don't... I don't know. Like, nothing just stands out as really bad and, like, mm-hmm. super cringy. I enjoyed the, like, pop culture references in this. Mm-hmm. Like, those are really good. Like, Street Fighter and, of course, Metal Gear being my all-time favorite thing. There's Metal Gear references. It made me happy. I enjoyed looking at all of the different names of the snacks that they had changed. Mm-hmm. Because they couldn't use the originals. That made me laugh a lot. Like how Pocky was, like, P-O-K-E-E. Yeah, and Pringles, like, it was, like, come Dingles or something, I can't remember. Yeah, and then, like, she was clearly playing a PlayStation 3, and they just didn't label it at all. Mm-hmm. Like how the internet, her phone, and everything else she tried to use whenever the internet went out had the exact same, like, Windows Chrome pop-up logo on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it was great. Yeah. Oh, her fucking hamsters. Oh, the hamsters are great. <laughs> It's like so how her dumb. hood matches her hamsters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Except for uh, the one that's a reindeer. <laughs> just him opening the drawer, and it's just drawer after drawer after drawer of just hamster hoods. Yep. Why well, need outside clothes whenever you have hamster hoods? He goes in the sense to go shopping, and she just buys games. Yep. But same. Yeah. Like, Umaru's mood. Yeah, Kiri's whole interaction with Umaru when she first started I thought was super interesting and kind of well done. Mm-hmm. I liked the um it's I feel like it's pretty normal for anime characters to look really stern and then not actually be really stern. I feel like that's a pretty common trait to see in animes. So I mm-hmm. wasn't really surprised when Kiri ended up being just really shy, because I've seen that a lot. Yeah. But I thought they did it pretty well with how she was consistently shy throughout the rest of the show because mm. sometimes i find that they um with that particular plot device they will make the character really shy then they they look really stern because of it then they interact with the main character and then they sort of lose how intensely shy they were very quickly mm-hmm. and i feel like they did a really good job of keeping that a consistent trait throughout the rest of the anime and then having her slowly warm up to specific characters, but also mm. still very much in in public and in social situations, re- retaining that level of shyness. I thought that was really well done. Mm. Also, Kiri and her brothers' interactions with one mm-hmm. another. I, mm. That's a great trope. Yeah. But also the fact that Bomber didn't even recognize her <laughs> when they're there at the beach because she put her hair up. Like, what? <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, oh, it's great. And then he's just like, this random high school girl is attacking me. It's like, why is she beating me? Stop it. He reminds me of Broccoli from Cheer Boys. Yes. In fact, wasn't he called like Broccoli or Broccoli Head at some point by somebody? Might have been. It might have been. But yeah, he, he gives me off the same energy. And not just because of the hair, but like he has the same dumb energy. Mm-hmm. Also, I love when Umaru wakes up and he's, like, looking over her and she just attacks. It's like, <laughs> what have you done with my brother? Yeah. Oh, hey, child, what happened to your hair? Like, how did it grow out this far? And, like, the processing time that it took 
like her like going through the visual images of Ty Hay's hair just like growing out and poofing up like that. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Mm-hmm. So dumb. So dumb. I really liked the uh, the the bit where uh, Sylphie and and Umaru go into the old candy store. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really like I don't know. It's one of those things that I've seen in like documentaries of Japan, Japan but I haven't mm-hmm. really seen in anime. I've seen it quite a few times in anime, actually. But then yeah. again, like our taste in anime are so different to where I can see why. Mm-hmm. It would be like that because your slice of life is much more sports, mm-hmm. whereas my slice of life is very slice of life and very little sports. So I've seen a lot of like, you know, like ten yen shops and stuff like that. I feel like I have this scene of it happening in one of the ones that we've reviewed actually for here on the podcast, and I have this scene of it happening, and I think I'm blending it with Tanaka Kun because I feel like he gets lost around one. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. But I feel like I've seen it a few times while here on the podcast, but I've never actually seen it, I don't think, as in-depth as it goes in this one, in the sense that they, like, actually spend some time in the store and 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 play around with stuff. And I thought that was really cute. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really find it amusing how all of the young girls are friends at high school and then all of their siblings work together. Right? I thought that was really funny. That is funny. Also, Ebina and the way that her accent changes whenever she eats something delicious. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I relate to that, actually, as well, because I, I am a person that put on a, a false accent for a long time. And now I have a weird half and half accent that I'm fine with. But, um, yeah, when I was in, in school, I also was embarrassed about my accent and so put on a different accent. And then random things would happen and my accent would come back and people would be like, hi, you're English? What? <laughs> so I relate. And, yeah, that does actually happen. Mm-hmm. Also like how they had actual KFC on Christmas. That was great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice little tidbit to add I enjoyed. I enjoyed Umaru on um new year's being like oh I, and with her brother being like i can't i can't drink umaru's here and then she just basically starts drinking but with cola instead yeah it's like bomber pulls out like different kinds of alcohol and drinks and then umaru does the exact same thing but with colas and it's like oh it was really funny that was a good time then i like how she's stuck with the orange things like she took that from new year's and like made it into her valentine's chocolate <laughs> That was good. I also really, really enjoyed the continuous storyline at the arcade. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, yes. Mm -hmm. Like how the arcade people just keep losing their shit every time she comes in. (laughs) It's UMR. We have to, like, make all the machines really floppy and, like, the claw machines make the the claws really weak and position all of the, the things in the machine so she can't get them. And I love how her love for that all just stems back to Taihei, just winning... Him, Bomber, and the girl from their school, a cat, and then Taihei giving it to Umaru. Mm -hmm. And how she still has it to this day, just sitting on a shelf. Yep. The ships that people had with um, Taihei were either Adina or the girl he went to high school with, who then he worked with, his work colleague, who was Mm -hmm. then the chief. Um, Kanao, I think. Kanao? I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, The, yeah, the them the, those are the two ships and it was like throughout the entire like three quarters of the show at the beginning it was him and abina and then all of a sudden the last few episodes people were like sorry abina i'm jumping ship in the comments and it was cracking me up that these people <laughs> were like i'm jumping ship i've got a new one now well that's because the later one is legal <laughs> yes true yeah uh but yeah, I don't know. It was it was uh, making me laugh a lot that people were so attached, and then all of a sudden we're not at all attached. Oh, uh, you should have seen it. The usernames matched up. <laughs> yeah, like, making sure it was the exact same people. They're like, right. "All right, I'm jumping ship. I can't right. anymore." Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's a fun time. That is really fun. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some other specific skits that I enjoyed. I don't know because a lot of them are like very similar. I feel like we covered a lot of them. I was going to say, this, that's why I don't think that this anime is specifically good for binging, because the the episodes do have threaded skits. Like, the skits are, are continuous in episode to episode to episode. Mm. So, for instance, take the arcade skit. It happens 
once and then the next episode you have a continuation of that arcade skit and then a continuation and then a continuation but those continuations are all the same storyline it's all she goes into the arcade the arcade guys do something to try and make her her activities harder she then beats them they then get sad she leaves the arcade like that's it, the, it's the same joke over and over and over again with a, a, like a couple new characters are introduced a couple things but the baseline is the same and oh, so how all of her friends see all of her different personalities but nobody knows that they're all the same person <laughs> nobody knows <laughs> yeah they just accept that she has a little sister and the fact that one of them de- knows like Abina lives underneath them she knows there's no little sister there if um, if Kiri just said, oh, where's your little sister to Umaru, Abina would be like, what little sister? And right. then Umaru would just be stuck because like, she can't be like, oh, the one that lives in my apartment that doesn't live in my apartment because I live there, but I don't live there because my little sister lives there. Yeah. Also, the fact that she almost told Kiri uh, that she was Komaru and then didn't. Mm-hmm. All because Bomber had... Seagull's trying to nest in his hair. That's funny. <sighs> but yeah, it's just like, I don't see how nobody could tell the difference, especially Sylphine with UMR and Umaru. Mm-hmm. Like, same height, same color hair, same voice. Just mask? No mask. I mean, it's the, it's the superhero principle, isn't it? It's the, it is. It's Superman isn't Clark Kent when he wears his glasses. And she's like the second smartest person in the class. She mm-hmm. always scores like a 99 and Umaru scores a hundred. Yep. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. It is it is very much the same thing of like, oh, well, it's the same joke over and over and over and over, and over again. So I do not recommend that you binge it because you will get bored. And I feel like that's why a lot of people did drop it around the fifth, sixth episode mark. Um, because that is kind of when you start to be like, oh yeah, it is the same thing. But it is also only one core, and it did come out, obviously, weekly. So I feel like it's one of those things where if you had watched it the time that it came out, you wouldn't have gotten bored because you would have had a whole week in between of watching other animes, you know? Mm-hmm. So, not only that, but it is a good show. Like, it's not a hard watch or anything no. by any means. It doesn't require much brain power. Yeah. So it's not like you're tired after watching it. And You know I, what it reminds me of? Hmm. It's like Sunday morning cartoon, Saturday morning cartoons vibe. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Like, if that came on on a weekend whenever I was watching TV, I wouldn't question it. Yeah. And you would look forward to watching the next episode next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, that's kind of how I recommend watching this if, if you want to consume this this show, is don't try and binge it. If you're a binger like me, put some restraint on it, you know, watch it when you have an appointment to get to or something, you know? So you watch one episode and then you have to leave. Mm-hmm. Don't do it when you go to bed at night because you will not sleep. <laughs> and I think a lot of it goes hand in hand with like just your preference in anime in general yeah if you're a if you enjoy this kind of thing then it is a very easy binge like i love this and it's why i suggested covering it just because i knew blue would get a good laugh out of it after you know a silent voice but outside of that if it's not necessarily your cup of tea shows like this like just funny slice of life nonsense then no it's definitely not going to be in easy binge at all yeah yeah i i i feel like it's i mean it is what it is it does what it says on the tin it's very very well done the the voice acting is is really good i actually saw some comments of people saying that they preferred the english dub i haven't seen the english dub so i don't know if it's any good but i have seen people saying that they actually preferred it so i have like in my brain i have like some semblance of a memory of an english dub Mm mm-hmm I think it might be on Hulu. Okay. I'm not sure. However, I will put myself through watching the dub by the time we sit down and record the next episode. Okay. Fair so enough. I will have an update. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, I'm super curious as to as to whether or not that that's actually true because yeah, that's that's that did pique my interest. It's not often you hear that somebody say that the dub was better. <coughs> Dragon Ball. Mm. The animation was really, really good. There's a lot of small things in the animation that made me laugh a lot. There are jokes hidden in the, uh, hidden in the animation that aren't actually pointed out by the characters. For instance, the snack changing. I know that they have to do that for copyright, but they did do it in a very funny way. I mm-hmm. know it made me laugh a lot. Yes. 
And then things like her transforming when she puts on her hood is always a good visual gag. Mm -hmm. Also, the facial expressions are just top-notch anime. I love them so yeah. much. Yeah, uh, there's there's quite a few visual jokes in this that I thought were really, really well pulled off with the animation. Mm -hmm. There are some some small moments of, of character progression, not from our main character, really. We don't really get to see much growth from her in any point, but I, I think that's kind of the point, is that she doesn't grow and everyone else around her does. I think it, that's kind of the joke of it. All of her different personalities are like different forms of growth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we do get to see that from some other characters. We get to see it a little bit from Kiri as she develops from being super shy. We also get to see it from Avina as she settles into Tokyo from country life. We also do get to see it a little bit from Silfin. Silfin because of her relationship with her brother a little bit and her talking about um, her history with her brother. So we get to see some of that. So we do get it from other characters, even if we don't get it from the main character. Although, again, that was a point that I did see it being brought up by people in the comments, being frustrated that she did seem to kind of neglect her brother. And, yeah, I understand it. I also felt that sometimes she was just completely, <laughs> like, a little bit too much for her brother. But, again, that is kind of the humor of it. So it's either one of those things that you're going to find funny or you're not going to find funny and you're going to find frustrating. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, can't think of anything else, really. Voice acting, animation, music. Wasn't really anything to write home about. It's not memorable. It's not no. like a silent voice or your line April, by any means. Yeah, you do get your classic beach episode in this, so there you go. You also got an episode in a manga cafe. That's not something you see very often in anime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of a sweet episode. I enjoyed that one. It was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Solid seven. Yeah, I'm going to give it a solid six. Uh, I'm between a six and a 6.5. I don't really know where I'm at with it. Somewhere around there. Because, like, it was very, very solid. It did, it did exactly what it said it was going to do. There were a couple good jokes. I just don't think it's super bingeable. And I am a huge binger, so it did kind of go against a little bit of my personal preference. But it's definitely really lightened the mood. And it's a good watch, and I do recommend it for you if this is your vibe. I think you just like to go through and undercut me on all of my ratings. That is it. Yeah, I just like to just slide in there one point under. Because very, very rarely are you either above me or the same as me. <laughs> Maybe I'm just cynical. I'm just mad. That's it. You're just like... Oh, Brad gave it this? Well, fuck him. I'm making it lower. <laughs> I could have put it lower. No, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought it was fine. It was, it's, it, I feel like it, it very much deserves the ratings that it gets on, on the online websites. I'm just, I'm just that little bit lower than that. And I feel like it, it's a solid watch. Give it a watch. I think it's just because it's not your cup of tea. 100%. I do 100% think that there is a level of personal preference that goes into my scoring. I'm not going to pretend I'm unbiased. I am biased. Um, and yeah, I feel like, I feel like this is just one of those things that was like really funny. I did enjoy it. It's just, you know, I've seen things that have made me laugh more. I mean, I was going to say, plus you also have to take into account that we're always going to judge these by the best that we've seen. Yeah. So we're both holding this to the same standards as Tonica Kuhn. Yeah, that's the thing is that I we kind of have a best in each genre and and we do hold all of them to that same and our like laid back camp to me is very similar to this in um the kind of visual jokes that it does and the same kind of soft progressive storyline kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um and I much preferred laid back camp. So I could see it. I prefer yeah. Laid Back Camp just because of the visuals itself. Mm -hmm. Like, the animation is stunning. Even though yeah. the characters themselves are simple, the scenery is just gorgeous. Yeah, and I feel like there's kind of things that, that Umaru Chan kind of fell a little bit back on, mm. and that's one of them. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. Quick one today. It was a quick one. Look yeah. at us go. Yeah, I know, right? This will probably only be like 45 minutes by the right, time I'm yeah. done with it. Right. But yeah, so let us know what you guys think about Umaru 10, because like we've said, it, it's one of those things that I feel like is a Marmite one. You either love it or you hate it. Like a lot of, uh, it's, it brings pretty strong emotions f forth, especially with the, with the, the feel that people have for the main character. And let us know if you've seen it, how you would have changed it to improve it. Like what things you would have said, mm, if they had done that, it would have been better. I don't. After reading the manga and everything, I don't know what I could have done to make it 
better necessarily Mm -hmm. because it's there. It serves its purpose. I don't know if I would want to change it in Mm -hmm. any way Mm -hmm. just because I feel like it would take away from its appeal. Right. Like it is definitely one of those you either love it or you hate it, but I don't think I would change it by any means. Yeah. It's like a comfort anime. It's like comfort food, but in in an anime. It's like macaroni Mm -hmm. and cheese. Yeah. You can add bacon to it. You can add fancy sauces and shit. But at the end of the day, it's still macaroni and cheese. I mean, yes, essentially. I guess one of those things where if I'm in the mood to watch this again, I'll definitely watch it again because obviously I've already watched it. But it's not one of those things where if I like desperately need a laugh, I'm going to go watch Tonic Cocoon because that's going to turn me on my head. That's belly laughing. Yeah, this doesn't have belly laughs. I feel like if you get some of the jokes and it's your type of thing, it could. Mm Mm-hmm. Like the Metal Gear stuff and like how she was practicing CQC on the really long tall cat thing. Mm -hmm. That got a really good chuckle out of me. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it's just like it has to hit the right nerve to get that out of you. Yeah. Is that everything? That's everything for me. So if you like Blue, she's going to be moving. So you're not going to find her on anything. (laughs) (laughs) Yata. But uh, she's on Instagram and Twitter at Blue Lab. The hell? Instagram and Twitter <laughs> at Blue Lavender STM. She's also on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Blue Lavender. She doesn't stream, but it's there. Go drop it a follow. Get her numbers up just for shits and giggles. Mm-hmm. And she also has an Instagram for her dog, Tilly, at the best Tilly Bean. Or if you like adorable doggo photos, go go check that out because they, they are adorable. Yeah, and if you like Brad, who has joined me today and all of the days on this podcast, you can find him at Brad Carter Gaming on pretty much everything. If you search, he'll be there. And we also have an Instagram and Twitter for the podcast at um, BNB Anime. We're at BNB Anime on all of our socials, so be sure to check us out, including on YouTube. We also have a website, www.bnbanime.com, where you can find links to your favorite listening platforms to download the episodes, or you can download them straight off of the website if you feel like doing so. We also have... Uh, behind the scenes stuff, uh, information on Brad and I, pictures of us so you can put a face to the name, links to our voice acting work, art stuff, friends of the show, all that kinds of fun stuff is all on the website. So be sure to check that out as well. So thank you all so much for listening. Blue and I greatly appreciate it. Next week, you have a silent voice. And then the week after that, it goes in. Mm-hmm. Because that's all of our backlogs. So, yes. But following that, you will be getting new game. We'll be diving into the world of game development just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I, I think it's going to be fun. The next couple of weeks are going to be great. Do be sure to check out those. And until then, we'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.